Well, hello. Welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, but for the day's project, I'm going to be Poppy. That's what my grandchildren call me. Naomi, my oldest granddaughter, is uh, 13 years old now, be 14 in about four more months. Uh, Naomi is very busy in school now, and uh, stay, stays real busy in that. She has a few extracurricular activities she enjoys, uh, uh, but one of them is sewing. Uh, as far as I know, she still enjoys sewing. I know she has, uh, whenever they come to visit, she likes to get in her, into her Mimi's craft room and uh, get some material out. And as for a project back uh, uh, during summer camp, she made right, a lot of clothes for some of her uh, stuffed animals, dolls, and those kind of things. But uh, she's a good designer. Uh, she likes to sew. So the item I'm going to be making for her today is going to be uh, have a sewing theme, I hope. Also, my other grandchild, uh, grandson, is 11 years old now. He'll be 12 in just a couple more months. Aussie's also very busy in school. Uh, he lives close by. Naomi lives down in Atlanta, about seven hours from me. Aussie lives about seven minutes from me. But uh, he enjoys, he's very busy in school, as I said, as well. Uh, enjoys some extracurricular activities. One of them he enjoys is shooting. He's got a couple of his own firearms, and he, he enjoys shooting uh, some skeet, some targets. Uh, i uh, not got into any pistol shooting yet, but the uh, item I'm going to make for him is going to be uh, themed around a uh, revolver. So what I'm going to do is take some aluminum flat bar, just like what you see here, some half-inch brass rod, and some one-inch brass rod. along with a few store-bought bearings. And I'm going to make them each a fidget spinner. As I said, Naomi's will be uh, sewing themed, and Aussie's will be shooting themed. So stick with me and watch it develop. For the discs themselves, I've got some, uh, these are some very, very rough cut, uh, three inch by three inch by half inch thick. Uh, flat bar and all I'm going to do right now is find the center by going corner to corner and I've got a half inch to play with here so it's uh, this doesn't have to be extremely precise on on where that center is Then once I got the uh, center marked off, I'm going to take my compass with the pencil and just put a radius on there so when I'm on the lathe turning it, that'll let me know when I'm getting close. All right, I'm going to turn around to the lathe now, get set up over there, and we'll turn these into some round disc. All right, one other thing I needed to do over here before I head to the lathe with these I need to turn that mark down and put us a piece of, uh, this is double-sided uh, duct tape here. And we'll just use that to help hold it in place on the lathe. All right, what I'm going to do over here on the lathe, of course, is peel off the other side of the uh, double-sided tape. I've got the jaws turned in uh, now so that they're smaller than the diameter and I'm going to take the tailstock with the live center in there and pull that up tight. Now that should hold us in place and of course this is going to be a major interrupted cut here but what I'll do is just take a little bit at a time. I'm going to turn my feet up Make it just a little bit faster, a little bit. All right, so I'm going to uh, just touch off now, get my DRO connected. 
All right, that's just touching. And I'm going to start out probably with about 40 thousandths at a time. I don't think we're hitting probably on about one or two corners right now to start with. All right, it's hitting all four corners now. What I'm going to do, I'll continue that process, and when I get down closer to the line, I'll bring you back. Okay, well, we've actually got a ring now, so I'm going to... Instead of taking 40 thousandths off the diameter each time, I'm only going to take 20. Remember, this is just friction held on there. When I get close to the, uh, to the final size, I'll slow the feed rate down as well. All right, I'm down to the pencil mark now, so let's see where we are. 574, so we need 74 more thousandths to get our two and a half inches. I'm going to slow the speed down now. We need 74,000. Start with 20. And our fa final pass While that's right there, I'm going to put the, the chamfering tool on there and see if I can reach both sides and break that edge just a little bit. All right, we got a good clean edge on there. And I'll get some acetone and clean the the glue off and continue this process for the other pieces. To facilitate holding the piece in the mill uh, while I do some the mill work on it, I'm going to drill a 3 8 hole in the center. I'm actually going to drill it with a 23 64 which is a 64 less than 3 8 Then we'll ream it a thousandths less than 3 8 All right, I'll do that to the other disc as well. I'm over at the mill now, and we've I've got one of our pieces mounted on a uh, stud in here. I've got a T nut in the t uh, in the slot on the mill table, got a spacer under here, and then got that bolted down tight. That's uh, that's why we made this hole right here uh, with the ream. We're trying to get it as precise as possible. I've got the quill centered on the workpiece. And I've got a bolt hole pattern laid out in, in the DRO, the digital readout now. And it's at 1.65 inches, six holes that will come around in here. I'm using a, a 27-64 bit. That's a 64 less than 7 sixteenths. That is what these holes will be. In here, we'll ream them out with a 7 16 after we drill them. But as stiff as that bit is, and going in the loom room, I don't think I need to uh, use a, the center drill to start with. Now, while we're sitting right here, we'll put the reamer in and ream that out. All right, over on the DRO, I advance to the second hole, and that tells me where to go with my X and Y position.
All right, the battery went down in my uh, wireless microphone. But what I did was put a 7 16th end mill in here. And I set up a bolt hole pattern on the DRO again, this time with the diameter at 2.75. Uh, so that we caught a little less than half, about a third of this 7 16th end mill here to put some scallops around the outside of this piece. As you can see, we have six inner holes and 12 on the outside around here. Okay, this first uh, spinner body that we made, this one's gonna be for Naomi, for my granddaughter. Six inner holes, 12 outer scallops on here. I've got another piece in here now, which will be for my grandson, Aussie. And we're gonna do the same six holes on the inside. I have that laid out in the DRO now. So I'm just going to go through the procedure of uh, drilling those six holes, six bolt hole pattern. Okay, for this hole pattern here, we're gonna go six holes on the outside of our, of our body. And those six holes will be centered in between the inner uh, six holes. And we'll be taking about half the width of the end mill. Okay, that's got the inner ring of holes, D-bird. This outer ring that's on this one, I'll have to take the file to that, but I'll knock those burrs off and get that part cleaned up. We'll head over to the lathe now and start boring out for the bearing. Bearings we'll be using a little less than an inch. They're, uh, what did I say, 22 millimeter in diameter. Uh, equates to about 0.865. Uh, so we're going to bore this out now. We've got a little bit to go before we can even start measuring. Okay. 
This shows me with two thousandths interference. I believe if I uh, put these bearings in the freezer uh, for a while, they'll shrink down just a little bit. I may take another spring pass here. Uh, I believe I will. I did advance the uh, cross slide and taking another thousandth right here. And according, according to the instrument and the DRO, that should have us a one thousandth interference. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm certain I can press that in now. To add some weight to the spinners, I'm going to use brass rod. This is half inch brass rod. I'm going to turn that down to the 7 16ths we have for this. And I'm going to make some plugs to go in each one of these. It'll be 7 16ths again. There'll be a rubber O-ring on them that will actually hold them into place. Each one of them will have a, a theme. This one for Naomi. Uh, as I said in the introduction, Naomi <clears throat> uh, enjoys sewing. So each one of these six inserts that goes on this inner ring will, I'll, I'm going to attempt to make these inserts resemble buttons. They will have an outer rim on it, and then we'll carry it over to the mill and put four buttonholes in there, or we'll put four holes for, to sew the button on with. But for right now, uh, these don't, these will not have a shoulder on them. So I'm going to turn this down to 0.485 so it'll be a good slip fit into this. And uh, we can use an O-ring to hold it in place. I said 0.485, I mean 0.437 is what we're shooting for, 0.437. I've got the collet chuck in there now. Got the piece in there, got the spider on the, the very back of the, the lay to keep that, keep it from swinging back and forth on the end. I don't care if these are a little bit loose in there because the o-ring is what's going to hold it in place and that's that's fine right there Okay, now we'll face off that end. And while we have this end right here, I'm going to put just a tiny little ring. Not sure how well you can see that. I'll get a close up when we take it out. But that put it just a tiny little ring on the inside of that, uh, uh, on the inside of the button. Now, break that edge just slightly.
Now I've ground a special tool to cut the O-ring groove and I need to go over on the uh, grinder and clean that up just a little bit so I'll be right back and we'll cut the O-ring groove. Okay I've got the uh, cutting edge cleaned up a little bit on that and what I've done is come back to, to the center of that piece and I'm just going to barely touch it off, set my DRO, zero out my DRO, then we'll go in about a hundred thousandths. Now we'll go back and finish parting this off. See how hot that one is. Bad? Okay. There's the little ring that I put in the end of it. We're going to carry this over to the mill after a while after I get all six of these done and actually put four a, a four bolt hole pattern in there uh, for the to simulate uh, where a button would be sewed on. As I said, we'll have to put these back in the lathe or back in the lathe chuck here and clean this end up and put our little ring in that side as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make six of these. I'll bring you back when we get ready to do the other end. Now we're going to start working on the inserts for, for Alsi, my grandson's uh, spinner. This is going to be similar, but it's not going to be a button. These are going to be bullets. So I'm going to leave a shoulder on those. This has to be turned down to also to 7 sixteenths but not for the full distance. 0.573. Just got to stop there. Now we, we want to take this much down to the 7 16 diameter. Point four three seven. I said 0.473, but 0.437 is what we're looking. So we've got 23 thousandths to go. I'll take 20 thousandths and then get a measure it with the piece itself. There's other 3 thousandths. That's what we're looking for. Now a bullet's not a bullet without an end to it. So what I've done is ground a little a radius, inside radius on the bit to make an outside radius of course on the piece. So we'll see how this works. Alrighty. Just like the other piece, right off of this end We'll come 300 thousandths over and put our O-ring groove. Now we'll back off the carriage stop and we want to go from that edge where we stop. We want another 65 thousandths. Small shoulder there. Okay, and there we have the filler for one of these. It will go in that side, shoulder on the other side. Now, as just like we did with Naomi's, we'll put this back into the uh, 7 16 collet and turn that in. And instead of putting a ring around there like we did for the uh, for the buttons. This will have just a small internal ring in there for the primer. All right, I've got the uh, the rod out now. I've got the half inch collet out. Got the seven sixteenths in, seven sixteenths collet. We're going to take one of the the button pieces, put in there, and I do need to clean out the O ring groove just a little bit. But while I got this facing tool on there, I'm going to. Knock that little tit off the end there and put our button groove in. It would have gone with the O ring in there, but it was it would have been a, a very hard force fit, so
Just going to clean that up a little bit. I'll continue to do that to the others. Remember on the buttons now, we're going to carry those over to the mill in a little bit and put our four hole pattern in there uh, to simulate uh, so, uh, where a button would be sewn on. Okay, just like the button ones, the uh, these bullet ones left a little tint on the end when we uh, parted them off. So I've got one of those in the collet now. We're just going to knock that off. And we're going to put a small little ring in there to simulate a primer. Get some of the glare off. So I'll continue to do that for the other five. And then we'll be ready to go to the mill and do some more work on the buttons. Okay, I'm back over in the mill now. I've got my 7 16 collet in the square collet block. Got it setting down on a, on a uh, wide parallel. I have checked it that, the, that it sets plumb when it's setting down on the bottom of the uh, of the collet, that the end of the collet is square as well. I have a 1 16th inch end mill in there now. And we're going to lay out four holes in there just to simulate the holes that would be in a button to sew it onto something. This doesn't look that much like a button right now, just the end of it. Got that ring in there. But here's what the prototype turned out looking like with a little accent on it. We're going to make those four little holes in the center. And when all's said and done, we're going to highlight that with some black paint inside there. But I think that looks pretty close to looking like a button. So I've got that tiny end mill centered. I've got the quill centered on, on there. And we've got two ends of six of these to do, so that'll be 12 of them to set up, 12 setups. But what I've done on the back back here, I've put a work stop, clamped the work stop onto my mill vise. So this being square, the collet being round, the work piece being round, I should be able to, uh, to repeat center each time, at least close enough for what we're doing here. And what I'm going to do, since that's such a fragile end mill right there, all right, that's just touching. So I'm going to set my z-axis DRO to zero on there. Now, for this pattern, we're going to go 75 thousandths from each side of zero. And we're going to go 25 thousandths deep. Now we'll go 75 thousandths on the other side of zero on the x-axis. Now we'll go back to zero on the x-axis. And 75 thousandths each direction on the y-axis. All right, there's the first hole, the, the holes drilled in the first piece. We're not drilled, we got milled in there. See if I can back some of the light off so we don't have so much glare. Again, it's kind of hard to see right now, but when I get it highlighted with some paint, get it all cleared out, I think it'll make more sense. All right, I'm going to turn this piece over in the collet now and do the other end and do the same thing for the other five pieces. The bearings that go inside the uh, spinners, of course, will need some type of a finger piece. And what I'm going to make are some little finger buttons here that will have a ball sewn there that will press in with this to this inner race, the inside of the inner race. We'll also have a my tiny little shoulder on there that will set on the rim of the inner race. And then the outside diameter of it will just be, uh, it's actually going to be 
uh, 900 thousandths. The bearings are 880 thousandths. So it'd be about 10 thousandths larger than the actual diameter of the bearings. So I'm going to work that up, not try to give a lot of explanation. Uh, I'll show you when we get done what we've actually got. All I'm doing right here is setting the carriage stop and we'll take this, this first diameter down to uh, 0.5 inches. Now we want to put that inside shoulder in a little bit, so I'm going to reset my DRO right there. We want it about 25 thousandths. The inside of the inner, inner race is 315 thousandths. That's showing 317, so we've got to take just a, I want a little bit of interference on there. And we're going to try just a very, very slim cut there. That's showing 315.3, and I believe that will press on there. I'm going to make just a spring cut on there. I'm not going to advance. Now I'll set the parting tool in line with the uh, that first shoulder we cut. Zero out the DRO. Now I want to come in 75,000 for the thickness of the finger piece. All right, once I clean this little, little tit up off that end there, we'll have a good finger piece there. Again, this will this will press in to the inner race. It's got just a 25 thousandths thick shoulder on the inside there that will set on the inner race. So I'm going to go ahead and make three more of these and that will have, I think, all the machining done on this project. Okay, I think we got all the pieces <clears throat> machined now. Excuse me. I've gone ahead and put the O-rings uh, install them on the on the buttons and the bullets and be sure they all fit into the main housing fine. We've got the housing done. The six bullets on this one. The housing done over here for the main body. Got the actually 12 buttons on here, two on each end. So now what we're going to get ready to do is give a little accent to these pieces. You see, it's kind of hard to uh, to see the primer that's engaged, that's grooved into each one of those. So what I'm going to do is take some alcohol and just clean these pieces up pretty good. Then I'm going to take some black paint and just smear a good liberal amount on there. Being sure we get down to the bottom. I'm going to let that one set for just a minute. We'll clean this side of 
the buttons. Love to use acetone for something like this, but I just come to the shocking realization a minute ago that I'm completely out of acetone. And remember, in the buttons we got the four thread holes. Then we also have that rim around the outside. All right, we'll let that side sit there for a moment. Now let's try wiping off some of the excess. I think you can see now maybe that the, uh, we got a little more accent in there. So I'm going to let this set for just a minute. Wipe those clean, then I'll turn it over and do the other side. All right, here's a quick shot of the first side of the buttons with the black highlight in there. I think that they turned out real good, I think. Uh, of course, there's more to accent on this than the, it was the end of the bullet, so uh, with just a primer. I think that turned out real good. I'm over here at the Wilton Vice now, and I'm going to use it to uh, press the bearings into the main housings. I've got those powder coated now. So I'm just going to set one of them here on the anvil and just slightly tap the bearing to get it get it lined up and get it started. Okay, so now we have the bearing pressed in. And we'll do the same thing with the finger pieces that we made. Just barely get those started. And we have the finger pieces. I'll do the same thing for the, for the other one. Then we'll meet back over at the workbench and conclude this project. Okay, I think we're ready to uh, wind these little spinners up. So let's put our insert pieces in. All right, here's the first one. This is Aussies with a revolver theme, if you will. And here's Naomi's with the buttons, both sides. They're kind of heavy for fidget spinners, uh, just like any fidget spinner. Don't really have a lot of practical use, but I hope, hope you've enjoyed watching the build. And more importantly, I hope the, uh, the grandkids enjoy having them, uh, playing with them a little bit, and maybe just as a keepsake to remember their old granddaddy by. Of course, we want to see them in high gear first. Again, take care. We'll see you on the next video.